Hey Vogue, it's Kylie Minogue. That was very pleasing to say with the rhyme factor there. We're going to be looking through this book. I don't know what's in it, but apparently some of my most iconic looks. Good or bad, let's see. This is, firstly, it's a really cute actually. That is in Los Angeles, I think. It's certainly in America. And I'm posing by a train. Obviously, for locomotion. So it was a brand new world for me. Probably still couldn't believe that I had made a record. You know, I would never have dreamt all this time later, I would still be in the same business. Next page. Bring. Okay, this is a beautiful one with Michael Hutchins at the premiere of my first film, The Delinquents. Wow, we look great together. I was wearing Morrissey Edmiston. I think they're Manolo Blahnik shoes. Yeah, there's a distinct um, change from the end of the 80s to the start of 1990 and largely because of Michael actually. I was excited to try different things. The crop wig was a last minute decision. That was a bit of a news headline the next day that I cut all my hair off, which of course had not. I mean, great, I love it. This is um, Mugler for British folk. That's a look I still love and covet. Super glamorous makeup, everything's a bit over the top. This is a great snapshot of where I was then. I discovered lip liner. I mean, <laughs> there's a new world. I didn't have too much control over my music, so I think I put more of it into fashion and the, the imagery. Okay, there she is. Living her best life in some Azadine Alaya. This collection was his uh, Tati collection. I lapped it up. For this video, I was really inspired by kind of Italian or Hollywood glamour. And of course, Barbarella. I guess I was at the age where I'm exploring my sexuality and how, how to portray that or how to have fun with it. I certainly was having fun with it. I'm too excited. Okay, how I got away with it. Maybe I never got away with this. I don't know. This is John Galliano for my 1991 tour. You know, next time there's, it's gonna rain, I'll just grab that look and, and out she goes. Fully waterproof, kind of. I actually got quite a bit of flack for these because they seemed too outrageous. Looking back, maybe they were. <laughs> I remember when my dad saw this show, I think all he could say was, I really liked your, um, your little white shoes. I don't think he knew what to say about the outfits. Sorry, dad. I mean, you should, every time I turn a page, I, don't, I kind of stop breathing. This is for the Confide in Me video, 1994. I have no idea who that outfit's by, but it's full PVC top and pants. And it's probably the first time I was schooled in the fact that you have to have tuck and powder within the latex to get in the latex. And then there's a whole other story getting out of the latex. The inspiration for this video was very pop art, six different looks, six different backgrounds, Around six different characters. That was something I had a lot of fun with. I also remember I'd done a fake tan the night before and then the day of the shoot, the director said, oh, no, we want you really pale, so more makeup. We haven't even got out of the 90s, people. She's ready for a night out, isn't she? The eyeliner is living its best life. And this is the premiere for Muriel's Wedding. Amazing film. It is so 90s. The clean lines, the spaghetti straps, the length or the not the length of this dress. I'm wearing, I remember, pink cross strappy sandals that I, I loved that had a few nights out dancing. If we made it out of the 90s, I, okay. I think I have an idea what, what might be coming next. I could be completely wrong. I knew it! Okay, gold hot pants, what can I say? This is from the video for spinning around in a Stella McCartney top. Hot pants from I don't know where. They were 50p in a charity store that my girlfriend Katerina Jeb bought for me. My stylist suggested I wear them for this video and the rest in, in this instance is history. Did you ever think that these hot pants would end up behind bulletproof glass <laughs> in a museum? No, I didn't, I could not have foreseen the life or the reach of these hot pants. I do remember the fitting and I was kind of timid. I put them on, I said, well, what do you, I said, they're like, you know, did it all turn around, this is what they are. And she just said, that's happening. I remember on the video day, red light on record, do it, do it, do it. Cut, I feel really embarrassed. <laughs> I also didn't know that she was, had chosen quite a snug 
crop. Anyway, by the end of the second day, modesty had, had um, was on an extended break. <laughs> so 50 pence well spent. I have no idea what the next look's gonna be. I'm gonna have a heart attack with all of these pictures. Okay, oh my God, my poor father. Um, this was 2000 MTV Awards. I loved my Manolo Blahnik shoes then. So I had a series of them with little diamantes down the heel, which was just two little bits of heaven for me. And the dress, if you can call it a dress, is Julian McDonald. Basically has no back whatsoever. It barely has a bottom. In my dreams, it would be akin to something that Cher would have worn in a 70s Cher TV spectacular. And I think I just got away with it. I hope. Let's go, let's go. <gasps> the green fairy absinthe in Baz Luhrmann's Moulin Rouge was a last minute thought by Baz Luhrmann. I think I was somewhere in Europe and my manager says, oh, Baz Luhrmann wants, wants to speak with you. So I spoke with him and he asked if I would be the green fairy that would be CGI'd into the movie. There was quite a bit of harness work, which always starts out as fun and in the end you just hurt. Yeah, I absolutely love her. You know, she's intoxicating and then she turns quite troublesome, let's say. What have you got for me this time? Video for Can't Get You Out of My Head. This is Mrs. Jones' hooded cat suit, very often called a dress. Not a dress. It had kind of, it had legs. I didn't even know where to start with this outfit. Okay, it didn't look like much on the hangout, let's say. It was just kind of, that hung. It took some ingenuity to make it hang like that on me, but it more than did its job. It was just so, it just became iconic. So the video for Can't Get You Out of My Head is quite futuristic. We were really inspired by Grace Jones, you know, the hood and, and strong lines, choreography was different than anything else at the time. But I do recall being on set of the video and we looked at the monitor just seeing the playback and there was just a moment that it kind of hit all of us and we said, that looks really good. So yeah, I'm pretty proud of that. This is performing Can't Get You Out of My Head at the Brit Awards in 2002. Of course, I arrived on a giant CD player. So yeah, this was a big moment. I don't know, health and safety. I don't, you know, let's just fling her on a CD. And I literally was hanging on to that one thing, which you can see in this picture. My outfits by Dolce & Gabbana. It's one of my favorite performances. All the dancers were in these silver, completely covered outfits, robotic headpieces, choreography by the most incredible choreographer, Raphael Bonicella with all this weird modern movement, which I think I only learned the day before. So of course, you know, not really prepared, but sometimes that's the best way. Keeping with the kind of modern theme, white again, and you know, a little bit futuristic. Nice Great. I don't know. Has that been on there the whole time? I don't know. I think it has. Oh, well. If this was from opening night of the Fever 2002 tour, I was a bag of nerves. The fitting for this with Dolce Gabbana, I was like, I can't wear that. And you've got everyone with the wider view saying, yes, you can. I love the extra adornments, which are by the jeweler Johnny Rocket, who made my cyborg reveal, which I was basically stuck in until the electronics would reveal one leg, then another leg, arm, arm, and then the headpiece would come up. So it's this beautiful, incredible structure. Until the night that the electrics didn't work and I was stuck in there just thinking, I'm sure it's meant to have opened by now. Okay, it's getting a bit long now. Okay, I actually cannot get out of this thing. Thankfully, uh, one of the dancers just in character, his kind of ro robot character came over and released all the parts of me. So I made it, I literally made it just in time to start singing. That was a good tour. People still talk about that one. So I'm proud of that. 2003, you've chosen some really nice pictures. I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for the one that I just have to run out of the room. This is the video for Slow wearing that Balenciaga dress, which was so phenomenal. We filmed this in Barcelona at the Olympic swimming pool. Yeah, we decided to have like no choreography. Choreography, I never stand up. Actually, this was a period in time where I was trying to make things not too hot, but it ended up being a hot video. All these like gorgeous looking people in their bikinis, swimming trunks, on their towels, this kind of warm color palette, just loving life by the pool, just tiny movements, little bits of choreography, not dance, but movement. And I think it's 
the video is most well known for the overhead shots where you just saw this kind of sea of people just writhing. And that dress, star of the show. There's a showgirl. Can you breathe in those corsets? Not really. A Mr. Pearl who made this corset as part of this John Gal Galliano outfit. And I think I'd mentioned maybe a zip and he nearly fainted. I would have to be laced up into this pre-show and then for the quick change, which is always quick, be cut out of that and quickly get into the next outfit. There's a reason showgirls just kind of parade around because there's not much else you can do. <laughs> Aphrodite, God, what a tour. That was over the top. <laughs> it was so over the top. There was a lot going on. All my costumes were done by Dolce. It's a mini at the front and it's a maxi at the back. Um, I've got gladiator, gold glitter gladiator, try and say that in a hurry. Gold glitter gladiator boots, pearls because she's come from the sea, gold because she's fierce and mighty, she's Aphrodite. You know, just doing a bit of a Venus arriving in her incredible shells. I'm not even peeking at the last look. Okay. Aww. <laughs> Aww. That's so nice. You sure there's not, there's not like the back half of this book is like the life and looks that I'd rather forget. Okay, this is Glastonbury 2019, performing in the legend slot. That meant so much to me. I'm getting emotional thinking about it. I actually wore this dress on the Golden Tour. Doesn't really look like it in this photograph, but when it's under light, it just shimmers. Every crystal's put on by hand, which I just can't even imagine that happening. I was due to headline in 2005, which was already a massive, massive moment for me because you know, I'm a pop artist and it's not, not that many pure pop artists would, would have that position or that moment. I was diagnosed with breast cancer, so I had to cancel. But as the years went by, I thought, I've, I've missed that moment. I, it was there and I missed it. <sighs> but then I had it later and I really don't want to cry, but I got there in the end. It was amazing and I really felt like a lot of the audience had been on that journey with me. They were aware of the history. They knew that there was that moment and it didn't happen. And trust me, I, you know, I work hard, I ride the highs, I try to survive the lows. But I, I you know, I did work really hard to keep going and to get this, to have this moment. So I think I'll always be emotional when I see things from, from Glastonbury, because it's not just Glastonbury, it means so much more to me and really was um, a kind of triumph, actually, in, in my personal history. Thank you, Vogue, for that trip down memory lane, which ended a little bit emotional. You know, there's emotion on every page, actually. If any of you were to look through your photo albums with all of your looks and what fashion does and, and who you were at that time, what you were going through, it, we all have our stories for that. So this is some of my stories. There's more to come. But for now, thank you so much.